Right now, let's get to last night's vice presidential, vice presidential debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Walls. We are joined this morning by former SEC chairman Jay Clayton. He's uh, now Apollo's non-executive chair and a CNBC contributor. Also, Gary Cohn, who is former NEC director. He's now IBM vice chair as well. And gentlemen, thank you both for being here this morning. Uh, why don't we just start with what we learned last night? Um, what would you take away from it? Here, here was my takeaway that I've said it before. The American people are smart. And these candidates responded to the American people asking for substance. We had substance last night on the economy. We had substance on border. And we had substance on conflict in the Middle East and Ukraine. Yeah. And, that, and that's because the campaigns responded to the American people saying, give us something, instead of calling each other names. And, and by the way, civility, I think, yeah. too. So, it was the and, other thing that came away from And I, I was imp very impressed by the substance. And I'll, I was particularly impressed by J.D.'s substance, not just isolated on those issues, but across those issues, how they all tie together. The American people know that a strong economy, strong national defense, and you know, immigration, migration, where we're going forward, they all tie together. And I thought he did a particularly good job of being consistent across those issues. Gary, what did you think on the economy, the issues that came out there? So I think on the economy, again, I'm not sure we learned a lot. I don't think any new policy was put out. In fact, the only new policy that's been put out since we were here last is the Harris Walls team did put out their 82-page economic platform, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting, and may maybe we should spend some, some time talking about that. Well, let's do it. But what we've learned, and I think what they continue to do, is they continue to, do, to reiterate that what you've seen in the past is what you're going to get in the future. So what you saw from the Trump administration during their four years, their policy of lower taxes, um, very accommodative from the regulatory standpoint, trying to grow the economy, they continue to reiterate that. From the Harris Walls team, they put out 82 pages of new, new and bigger entitlements. Like I could go through the list, but I'm not sure we have enough time when you talk about new housing credits, small business credits, forgiveness of student loans, higher inflation, uh, enhanced child credit, credit credits, preschool credits, long-term care credits, paid family leave credits, government control of health care, price controls. I can keep going. No, the you're, list you're, keeps going you're on. right. I, I think you're absolutely right that, that there's a big change, but I would say it's the same from both campaigns. That, because I would say uh, former President Trump has laid out a pretty long litany of things on the campaign trail that he would spend on. And we're not looking at a whole lot of ways to raise it outside of tariffs. So I, I think you're right. I, th I think both of these campaigns are talking about pretty aggressive shifts from what we've seen in the past. No, I think this is exactly what Bidenomics is. I think the Harris Walls team laid out in 82 pages Bidenomics. So now we can call it Harrisonomics. <laughs> and I think what you've seen from, from the, the, the Trump Vance team is you've seen a reiteration of what they did in the past. They, they continue to talk about lowering taxes. They do continue to talk about tariffs. We've talked about tariffs, where they're effective and where they're not effective. They continue to talk about growing the economy. Growing the economy so we have a higher GDP, so everyone gets raised up, so we can, we can grow wages, we can grow the entire size. And I think that's the difference. One is grow the economy so every, all boats rise. The other is redistribution of the economy. Uh, the, the two things that really strike me now, though, is we are faced with massive news issues that we've been talking about all morning. One would be what's happening in the Middle East. The second would be the strike with the longshoremen. And, and maybe we should start with the easier one first, being the longshoremen. Um, yeah. yeah. So we were talking, Jay Powell, you know, I think everybody's giving him high marks for where we are in, in trying to land this. What's not in the textbooks? A port strike. What's not in the textbooks? You know. Increased conflict in the Middle East, energy price shock, if that comes or not. These things are not there. And, and both of them are inflationary. Yeah. And so what do you do if you're at the Fed? You've, you've done very well here. You've, you've kind of brought demand down. We're going to have, you know, head towards soft landing. And all of a sudden, you have these two inflationary forces hitting you in the face. The Fed has a tougher job today than they did a week ago. And, and what happens? I mean, Gary, just looking at it from the economic perspective, we've been talking about how three-tenths of a percent cut off GDP if this lasts a week and yeah. every week thereafter. No, look, as Jay said, we've been talking about this a lot. This is a much tougher scenario, and we haven't thrown the Middle East in there. We haven't thrown a major oil shock. We haven't thrown in there closing the Suez Canal 
and making shipping routes completely different. And we know the difference in shipping costs going around Af Africa than through, the, through the, the Mediterranean. These things are highly inflationary. They will, they, this, this will be the real definition of transitory inflation. We'll get back to where we thought we were four years ago of transitory inflation, a port strike, um, real, real uh, disruption in the Middle East and, and shipping lanes and oil. This is all will have real short-term impact on the U.S. economy. Um, and I think uh, Chair Powell sort of um, started foreshadowing that last week. We started talking about you know a slower, more methodical right. move. Right. Mm -hmm. I think he was foreshadowing exactly what he thought may be in the cards with the port strike. Right. Look, we got the 50 basis points, which we always thought was 25 at Jackson Hole and 25 at the meeting. That was the 50. Then we thought there'd be 25 more in the next two meetings. You know, look, I think there still is probably 25 more in the next two meetings, but it's not is, 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 is positive. I'm not as positive today as I was last time I sat there because of the port strike and because of what's going on Talking in the Middle East. These things can amplify very, very quickly. I want to show you guys video, which you may have seen. This is uh, the head of the Longshoremen uh, Union, and this is what he had to say. Let's show you this video. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you, and you have no idea what that means. And then he goes on to suggest how he's going to cripple uh, the country by uh, all of the different uh, various people who are going to lose their job. And it, it, it I mean, by the way, uh, he's a Trump supporter, mm -hmm. um, known, known yeah. to be. I'm curious, actually, what your reaction is to that and what you think either uh, former President Trump should be saying about this or, frankly, what you think uh, Vice President Harris should be saying let, about let, this. Let me jump on, in on this. Both, both sides are hoping to get the vote from labor, right? Totally. And, and, and one of the reasons is because the American people feel good about labor. We want people to have good jobs. What is one of the worst things that can happen when you're representing a constituency? That you go from having the American people behind you to losing the American people. Right. What I saw in that video was someone who's going to lose the American people if he's going to tell you, I'm going to jam you for money. Now, even worse, I'm going to jam you for money, and we want a prohibition on technology coming mm -hmm. to ports in America. That's, that's saying we want a job for life. We're going to hold you. you up. I'm and curious you know what, what you're you gonna... think the political implication should be and what you think uh, the leading politicians in this election should be saying as a result of this, because nobody wants to touch this. Well, I, I you, know, you just I, touched. I, I touched, and I say you, you shouldn't be jamming the American people like this.